Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Bite Podcast with Raven and Ree. I'm Raven. And I'm Ree. And this is our third. Is that what? Is that 13th? 13th. Lucky 13th. Lucky 13th. This is our 13th episode and the sixth and final installment of our Midnight Sun series. We have made it to the end. I kind of feel like. I don't know what I'm, we're going to, like, do with our podcast after this. Like, exactly. <laughs> what's I mean, the we, direction of our podcast after this? I don't know. I mean, oh, my gosh. It's, like, now are we going to turn into a Harry Potter? Yeah, we have we so have much no- other things. Uh, I think there's so many, like, topics that we could even get into for, twi- like, Twilight. That there's so much that we haven't even, like, touched on that we could definitely just go for more Twilight. Go for other fandoms, whatever you, whatever you guys want. Maybe we'll do like an Instagram poll. Yeah, we'll we could do another similar how we did with vampire, hi- like we're well, not vampire, where we did hybrid children and we did like several. We could do something. We could do like prophecies or like mm. and like the different types of prophecies and fantasy um, culture. Yeah, that'd be cool. Love that. Well, All we'll right. tell you guys whenever, whatever we decide to do, you'll, you'll be the yeah. first to know. So we are at the last, so this ends, how many chapters are there total? Because we're on 26. Um, we have, I believe there's, let me see, there is, okay, that's the epilogue, so. Are there 29? Just 29 chapters, but 30 including Uh-oh. the epilogue? Yeah, it is 29 and then epilogue, so 30 total. We are going to discuss chapters 26 to 29 plus the epilogue, and we will be done with our Midnight Sun series. Yeah. And hopefully, we don't cry. Yeah. We both know what's coming. (laughs) Okay, so chapter 26. This is after they just got to the ballet. Edward just got to the ballet studio. He just threw himself through the door. Threw himself. Flying. Everything was shattered and things were happening. Um, He he flew into James and smashed him into the floor, which is so cool. Like, how amazing. Um, So Emmett was in the middle of the room until he kicked the... He kicked the... So Emma was waiting for the tracker in the middle of the room and Edward Edward kicked him over there. Um and it's yeah. it's super cool that um Bella was obviously, you know, her there was blood everywhere. She was screaming. Um yeah. and she was she was kind of um I don't think she was I think she was kind of like going in and out of consciousness at this point. Well, you got to remember that the one thing that's very distinctly different from the movie with the books is in the movies, it was Edward and James one-on-one for like a few minutes. And it's in that point where Edward sees um, him bite Bella. But Mm -hmm. in here, they don't realize that he bit her. Yeah, Yeah, because they all arrive together. So she's like in hysterics. They don't really understand why. Yeah, they just think it's because she's hurt. Yeah. Basically. And, um, so then, yeah, that's when, so already Edward and Carlisle are there with Bella and Jasper and Emmett are taking care of James, you know, they're, they're, I think, honestly, I think Jasper, like, even though he's like trying to change his life, like he was made for this. He was like, I'm ready. Yeah. Like, like he was, he was like, all right. So, um, basically, um, Carlisle's checking her and making sure, like, she's fine. So, he's like, okay, well, you know, she broke some ribs. Um, she's obviously lost, uh, she got a cut on her head, but it's not super deep. Um, her leg was broken. Um, and, 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 uh, Carlisle was being very, like, uh, practical with, with, like, her injuries and stuff like that. You know, he was trying to, like, figure it out. Um, and she was bleeding so much that Edward said that her blood soaked through his jeans. And I can just imagine, like, it just, it just amazes me that in the beginning of this book, Edward couldn't even be next to her without wanting to kill her. But he grew to love her so much 
that in this moment she's literally bleeding out something that she's literally he's literally wanted right her blood and he's like doesn't even like care about it right now he's just like worried yeah. about her um yeah. and he's pleading he's like bella you're gonna be fine can you hear me bella i love you i know like, oh, my oh my goodness god so basically she was trying to talk she said edward and she was like it hurts and he's like look I already I know it hurts, dude. Right, but she's like she's not talking about. <laughs> they're she's like, like my, my hand hurts. My hand is burning in the fire. Yeah. So um. Basically, he was like, "Okay, Alice, like, give me my bag because Carlisle wanted to start stitching her up, so that you know things like they they had to start getting things done so that she's not like um." you know, in, in pain and she can start to heal. Um, basically they had already, um, pulled Edmund and Jasper already killed the, the, um, James and then they started, uh, oh, but they were struggling because they smelled Bella's blood. So they were like, Oh, yikes. Right. Yeah. Alice also was struggling um, and she stopped breathing and then she went and got Carlisle's bag and then they hear the sirens happening. They're like, oh my goodness, the sirens, like we got to move, we got to work quickly. Um, and I think it was so cool or not cool, but she asked about Alice, right? Um, she was like, Alice is here. She was like, yes. And she was like, that's when she says, my hand hurts. My hand is burning. And then they look and they're like, oh my goodness. Like, I think maybe, I think maybe like Edward had recognized the burn, right? That like she was feeling. She was like, I knew what I was like, she was talking about. I just didn't want to like think it about it. Yeah. And uh, so then he bit her and then he was like, the fire that she was feeling was venom. And, um. So it he he I think he had saw it in replay or something like that that when the tracker lunged Bella's hand got put out in front of her um and when the Edward slammed into him that forced him away but his teeth were exposed and his neck was extended so he that's how he was able to bite Bella you know yeah yeah it was just a quick split sec in that didn't even register to him in that moment that he was able to like bite her mm -hmm. and um basically um and, uh, carlisle was so shook right here because he was like first he was working on her but then they realized that she was bit so he was motionless that he was like oh my what's happening that edward said that he wanted to yell at him fix her um yeah. and he was like everything broken would knit together on its own every shattered bone every gash every tiny leaking tear they would all be whole soon um and her heart would stop and never beat again and then she yeah. and then alice oh, that, oh go go oh, oh okay sorry i didn't want, i didn't mean to it was just like i think rereading it it was like oh i forgot about this because i think he was also motionless because he had seen where and how it was his hand the hand and he had gotten bit on the hand and I think he was, like, remembering and, like, mm -hmm. mentally frozen because he knew this was going to last for days. This was going to, it was too, like, he didn't know what to do because it was all, like, he can't really, once the venom starts going, it's mainly about, like, okay, he needs to, uh, the, the decision needs to be made because if he were to bite her closer to the heart, then, like, um. It would have been would be, quicker. It would have been quicker. But it was the hand, so it was. Yeah, and at this point, at this point, they didn't have days, you know, they yeah. had minutes, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So basically, um, Carlisle. I think at this point, I honestly feel like Carlisle was okay with wanting to for Bella to turn. Like he was yeah. like, I mean, you know, but then I think um. Alice was saying, like, it can't happen this way because, I don't know, I feel like maybe they all had different like, turning experiences and they were just, like, 
It's just not one way that, <laughs> like, it's not supposed to happen like this, you know? Yeah. They wanted, they want, Alice for sure wanted it to be where Bella was in peace and, like. Yeah, yeah. On her own accord. They want, Alice wanted it to be on her own accord, but still, but he, she was more like, you know, of course, like, it's going to happen. Like, eventually let it happen, but she didn't want it to happen to this extent. Yeah. And, um, so then basically they told Edward, like, you're going to have to, like, you know, um, oh, because I think Alice had said, like, you can't make it go on for long. So, like, just, you have to bite her, like, if she's going to turn, you have to, like, do it somewhere else, like, yeah. where it's not going to hurt her, you know? Yeah. Or, well, she won't suffer. Um, and then, but he, and he said no. He was like, I will not do it. But then Alice, Alice, Alice's vision was much stronger than her being a vampire. Um, so then they ended up deciding, like, it's not happening, you know, but, um, Carlisle told him, like, you need to suck the venom out, right? And he was like, I can't do it. You have to do it. Yeah. And basically that's when Edward, well, he was very, he was struggling with himself with it, right? He was like, like, I can't, like whatever right and but carlisle said like you have to do it because carlisle was um uh, stitching her up and stuff yep. um and yeah, so that uh, if so that if edward does it right then and there then at least if she stays human that her bones would um like heal right yes and we also get a little nod to life and death on five seventy nine, they say life or death or half my or half life my decision, right? <laughs> um, oh my god! It just sorry, life and death. With this, mm. I love you gotta life. read it. Yeah. You, I, you gotta read it. I I I started a little bit, so I'm <gasps> I'm 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 there a little. <laughs> um, we have to do an episode on life and death compared to Twilight. yes, we totally can. I love that. Uh, maybe not right after the Midnight Sun series, though, because that's too many books. <laughs> oh, yeah, nah. Uh, well, um, only time. Basically, so then Bella's in pain, whatever. Um, Carlisle's just going into doctor mode. And then Edward was like, you have to do this. There's no other way. You cannot fail. Like, you're going to save her. You're not going to kill her, whatever, right? So then he starts to already suck the venom out. And, uh... And then he said that it was only a little bit of, like, because the venom had already started heal healing her. Um, and he um, he said that he, that's when he started getting Bella's blood again. And I do know that there was a point to where um, um, there was, like, a point where he was, like, like, that he stopped f tasting the venom, but he just kept sucking her blood. And it was just, like, he just yeah. couldn't, you know? Um, and Edward, he even said, like, I'll show you when. And she said, like, like, Edward, oh, Bella said Edward. And then Alice was like, he's right here. And then Edward was, like, right here killing you. <laughs> he's so intense. I can't even deal with him. Um... Alice told him, hey, stop. And he was just like, nope, he didn't. And then, uh, but then he decided to. He was like, okay, it's there. I will. I will stop. Or no, oh, because B Bella said, stay, Edward. Um, stay with me. And that's when he stopped sucking her blood. And he said, I will. Is it all out? Her blood tastes clean. Um, is the fire gone? She said, yes, thank you, Edward. I love you. And then... She said, I know. So cute. Even if though she's, like, dying. Oh, and then he was like, what happened? Like, where's your mom? She was like, in Florida. He, that's when they find out he tricked me. And then even after, I think it's at the end of this, where they, where he told Alice, was like, Alice, the video, he knew you. He knew where you came from. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, and, yeah, Bella had just, like, that was, like, one of her last things she said before she kind of, like, passed out. Yeah. And then Edward could see, like, 
the future, like, Alice immediately, like, saw her, like, the future where she's sitting down watching it, and Edward saw, like, her watching it, so. Yeah, so Alice didn't even have to, have to watch the video, because she had already seen it in her vision. Yeah. So, yikes. Um, and then she does anyway, like, she still watches it, I believe. Oh, yes, they do. Um, so then we get to 27, which is actually pretty short, but basically this is the, this, is this the chapter where Alice goes full on fucking like bad bitch and like cleans up the mess that they've made. Wait, let me see. Is it I this think... one or is it the next one? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, he see he sees what's going to happen. Yeah, it's a, like on 588, it says Alex walks into the lobby. She gets the room. So it is this chapter. Yeah, Alice literally finessed this entire thing. Because in this, I love this chapter because it's like, it's not, it hasn't happened yet. Because it's literally just Alice's vision of what she's going to do. But I exactly. love that. I love that. I think that I this, that. yeah, this is something that I wish we got in the movies. This is so yeah. fucking cool. Like, what? And I just love the chapter title because it's called Chores. So it's a, like, she's doing her chores to <laughs> save the day. Yeah, so then they start, um, they start, you know, um, just saying, like, okay, well, like, how, like, like they're just calculating what's going to happen. And it's just amazing. They're like, okay, um, you know, let, what, oh. let's... Fucking Jasper is holding his damn breath, him and Emmett, because Bella's bloodied ass is in the car with them. <laughs> and just, how did they, you know, props to them. Round of applause to those two. Yeah, so you know what's super, like, so it starts off by Alice. So what's going to happen is that they, they go inside the hospital, steal a bag of O positive, and then... <laughs> Alice, um, basically, they need, so, okay, I'm just like, this was just like the best thing ever. Um, Jasper and Emma would be in the car, they went in, they steal the blood, um, she goes into the, the lobby hotel that they were, was it a, it was a different hotel, not the one that they were originally staying in. Yeah, no, they, um. Yeah, it wasn't the same hotel because I think it would have been too suspicious. Yeah. Um, and so then um, basically she asked for a room um, with, but first they gave her a room on the first floor, but then she, I think she went back and asked for a room on the second floor or something like that. Yeah. And then, um, go for it. Oh, you know, I was saying, I think it was because um, they needed to make it look like she fell down the stairs. Yeah. So... So, um, so then they're there and she was like, okay, second floor. And then they go to the second floor. They go, it says they put the do not disturb. She has the blood bags. And then she basically, what she does is she's in the hall. She goes to the hallway. She pauses in the middle of the stairs and like, I think Yank throws herself out of the window. No. <laughs> Like, what the, Alice, like, what a crazy, like, um, yeah, so then she throws herself out of the window, they, I think they put on the, something about the, the horn, they did something with the horn for three seconds, she threw, she, it says she hurls herself down the stairs like a bowling ball, <laughs> and I can just imagine this tiny child, like, this person, did you know I my brother is probably like five foot like two right now I don't know something like that my brother's like pretty tall for a seven year old and Alice is shorter than him. <laughs> You're my brother will probably be taller than you in like a year. Oh yeah, because we're the same height right now. Oh my yeah. gosh! Wow. <laughs> but you wouldn't. But you wouldn't know the most hysterical thing about this whole thing is. We see that she she literally hurls herself down the stairs, all that, flings the blood, and then all of a sudden, um, she calls and is like, "Pick me up." <laughs> yeah, super cool. Yeah, it's done. It's done. And then, um, then she goes to the back to the airport, gets a rental, um, 
And then she basically, um, she's being very meticulous. She ends up going, um, to a, oh, because I think they put the, she put the blood in the car because they had to make it look like they carried Bella from the hospital, from the hotel to the hospital. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait. She had the, she had, hold on. No, yeah. Okay, yeah. Something happened. So she, because yeah. there was, they needed to get a different car because they were in a stolen one at first, right? Yeah. So because, um, she, yeah, she says to the guy behind the counter that her niece threw up some tomato juice and then the guy says that the car will be spotless. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it's the same car. It might that, be the, the car that they're in or I don't know. Yeah, that they're currently in. Because it was like, um, they had to get rid of that car to get a new one. But. Yeah. Well, and then it's so funny because she goes back to the hotel. She goes to the front lady at the desk. An amazing actress, Alice is. And tells her that there's been a horrible accident. That her friend fell out the window. She's at the hospital now. But that there's glass and someone can get hurt. And basically the... They don't call the police. She calls management, and the lady's terrified that they're gonna get sued. Um, and then they go to the mall. Alice goes. They go shopping, and they get new clothes for. Um, for the boys. For the boys, yeah, because they they you know they were wearing different clothes and stuff like that. Um, and then then there a lot of their clothes are in blood and stuff like that. Um. And it's super cool because she was like, there's no rewinds or replays. Everything goes. That's at that point, because at this whole time I was reading, I was like, this is happening. But then I read that and I was like, oh, it was Alice's vision. Like, I was like, that's so cool. Yes. Um, and then that's when uh ja- Jasper and Alice end up driving back home. They're going to go yeah. home first. Carlisle's going to stay to do like the doctor stuff. And then Emmett's going to fly. Yeah. And, uh, basically, they are going to get the, they're going to, I think they're going to get Bella's truck and take it to Seattle or something like that. Um, and she was like, well, Emma's coming home. And then basically, they just. Wait, no, wait, they, they have to get the truck there. Because remember, that they had the truck in Forks in Seattle. So, yeah, I think it was Emmett's going to meet Rose in Seattle and then they're going to drive the truck down to Phoenix. Yeah. 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 And then, um, yeah. So basically, um, Oh, and then do we get like a little hint here that the, that, um, that Victoria might be out for revenge a little bit. Cause she was like, just stay near Bella's father in case. And she was like, is she coming back? She's like, well, I don't see her right now, but you know, Whatever. Yeah. Um, and then this chapter basically ends with them getting into the... Oh, and I love this part because it was like, Jasper pulled up to the emergency room, keeping his distance from the camera on the side of the entrance, looking for a shade. I adjusted my grip on Bella and prepared to go through it all again for the first time. So he had seen all of it, but he was like ready, finally, like he was prepared to go through all of it again. Yeah. Wow. Love it. There's the, that was... Stephanie, that was some great writing on your part. How does she come up with that thing? Wow. What a smart lady. We love you. Sometimes. <laughs> no. No shade. No tea. <laughs> no shade, no tea. So then we get to chapter 28, which is three conversations. So this is just them telling Charlie what happened. Them telling the doctor what happened. And the doctor did not question because the doctor knew Carlisle. Yes. And he did and not then- question anything. He was just like... Okay. <laughs> yes. And then Renee comes. Oh, Renee. What a mess she is. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, Charlie wanted to fly out, but the, Carlisle was like, no, it's too much. Like, you're, like she's taken care of. Like, she's fine, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Renee's mind is just crazy. And Edward finally understands. Like, he's like, oh, I get it. 
She's a little out there. And it's interesting because he even talks about about if she was a vampire, if Renee was a vampire, how like her powers. And I was like, we so we see we talk about Charlie's powers if he were to have any. Yeah. Renee and then Bella, thus proving that the powers are. You are are yeah they're they're from your DNA you you get your powers from your parents yeah because Bella you know she's mentally shielded kind of like how more powerful than Charlie but she's able to project that shield kind of like how Renee can project to where people are drawn to help her yeah wow so Renee and Edward finally meet. And she was like, this is the boyfriend. Oh, Bella doesn't stand a chance. Renee's very disapproving of her daughter's uh, capabilities. Yeah, I was like, ah! Yeah. So, um, then she calls Edward Edward handsome, which, duh, we know that. Um, I hope he's not playing with her. She's very, like, suspicious about their relationship, I think. Yeah. Bella had not woken up yet, so they were just, um, oh, she, and she didn't question at all about the accident. She was just like, Bella's clumsy, it makes sense. Yeah. She was like, okay. Then we get another pomegranate seed, Hades, Persephone reference on 603. He says, pomegranate seeds in my underworld. Hadn't I just witnessed a brutal example of how badly my world could go wrong for her? And she was lying here broken because of it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, so basic, basically Bella's just asleep here. But she ends up waking up. Um, is this the one where Edward goes and goes to go watch the tape? Um. Yes, see. it is. Yeah. It's on 6.04. So, um... Alice suggested yep. for her to keep, she'll watch Bella, and he went to a church. Yeah. Oh, it was it. It was I think the was it. Did he go to a church or was it like the you know how hospitals have like a yeah it was a it was area. a chapel like a yeah. Um. Gotcha. And basically, so he watched the video, and um, he saw everything. You know he. Everything that happened. Um, and he was doing this for Edward. Like, he was, like... Because he wanted to torture Edward. Um, and then he saw everything. He saw um, Bella walking in. He saw literally... I mean, everything, you know? Yeah, how Victoria had to... Had dished out information for James. How... Um, and then... Yeah, and then and then he finds out about Alice and how James had planned to actually go after Alice after he was done with Bella. Mm -hmm. And then it's so funny because here, uh, and she he, we find out what was written in the letter. It says, "Please, please, please, don't come after him. I love you. Forgive me." Is yeah. what the the letter had said, and um. Yeah, they just, they, they're, it's like the whole ballet scene kind of over again, but Edward's watching it. And then at the end of it, he, um, he, what's it called? Like, tore, or crushed the, the camera. Yeah. And oh, I think wait. he also, was, was it also, he also crushed up the, the lemonade cap, right? <laughs> bottle cap you know how pissed off that made me because that bottle cap had given me so much happiness and then he does this i know where is it he um oh it was six twelve. no wait no that was six twelve. he crushes the camera Oh, on yes, 613, yeah, like right after that. 613, yeah. That's when he did it also. I was just like, you serious right now? Yeah, and then oh. he knew when she was going to wake up because Alice had the vision of it. And I just want to point out before we get into the next how it just, 
made my heart like wow when he when he because he was like there was no god that i belonged to and so instead he prayed to her god to like keep her safe and i was like edward i know well how sweet of him wow um then i I prayed to her it says i prayed to her god with all the anguish of my damned lost soul that he or she or it would help me protect bella for myself and I was a little interested that Stephanie put that. I was also very, very... It, yeah. He or she or it. Or it. And it just... Because we know that Stephanie's very Mormon. So it yes, just... And we know that the Book of Mormon, which, you know, she grew up and, all, and like, you know, worshipped in her religion that is a, has a lot of influences in twilight so so it just makes me wonder if she's starting to break away from that a little bit yeah because or there's maybe, some there's been some things in here that we've been like what like they would never like yeah. stephanie and then yeah. for her to say he because you know it if i feel like if this were in twilight if this were back then she would have just put I prayed to her God with all the anguish of my damn lost soul that he would help me protect Bella from it. Yeah. For myself. So, it could definitely be that maybe we're seeing this. Like, maybe it's like a new kind of thing where she's kind of real, like, trying not to have so much influence mm-hmm. of her religion to her story. Or it's more like Edward is a creature um, that wouldn't probably have religion and so he doesn't really care or know what's out there so he would say whatever yeah but for sure uh, it was it was very interesting very interesting so then we get to chapter 29 which is the last chapter before the epilogue um i don't know if it was this i, I think the epilogue broke me a lot too so it was these last two that were just like oh my goodness Basically, Bella opened her eyes. You know, Renee's there. Renee and her are talking. Um, and then Ed, Edward's there. And he, you know, he was like, what happened? And I think he told her, you know, like, what happened uh, to what, like, what what they're, like, lying. Like, what the lie is. Um, so she can, like, you know, kind of be, like, back on it. Um... It was like given the way both her parents had accepted our story, not that just not that not just that it was possible, but it was somehow to be expected. I just felt justified in adding you have to admit it could happen. <laughs> so he was like, You fell down two flights of stairs and through a window. You have to admit it could happen. So I love that even though like this terrible thing has happened, they're still kind of like you know, playing a little bit. And then it was, it was, he also mentioned how, cause she had to get a whole bunch of transfusions and he was like, I don't like how you smell because it's not her blood. It's like someone else's blood. And, uh, but eventually like she'll go back to smelling how she like, like how she normally would. Um, but then they do know that cause he was like, how'd you, how'd you do it? Like how they kill him. And, uh. They and I think she said he said I'm not sure, right? Because he was like, or was it? Oh no no, was she talking about the like him sucking her blood? I don't know if he failed. I don't. Oh, hmm, I don't know if that comes after the conversation with Renee. Yeah, I did. I'm on. I'm looking at six seventeen because it says um. She was like, oh, well, it must have been a nice change for you and because of how her blood smelled differently. And he was like, no, I like how you smell. And then she's, um, she said, how did you do it? And he said, I didn't, I didn't know why the subject was so unpleasant. I had succeeded. I knew Emmett, Jasper, and Alice were awestruck by my accomplishment, but I couldn't see it the same way. So, yeah, I think they were talking about her, him sucking the venom out. Yeah. And she said, uh, he said, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, how did, like, how, I think, like, 
how I think she kind of knew how he did it. She just was amazed at how he had managed to, because and that's why he was like, because then she jokes, um, because then she jokes, do I don't I taste as good as I smell? Oh yeah, because right <laughs> before that he was like, it was impossible to stop, impossible, but it did. And he tells yeah. her, I must love you. She was like, don't I taste as good as I smell? Yeah, so she she could piece the, together that he had done it. She just wanted to know like how did he manage. Yeah, and then um, they apologize, and you know he was like, "You stayed," and he was like, "Yeah, I did." They asked if Alice saw the tape, and she said yes, and he was like, "She was always in the dark. That's why she didn't remember because Alice was in a, a in a in a an asylum, and she was always in the dark. So that's why Alice has no recollection of her her past. Yeah, which is sad." Yeah. Um. Then. So then she doesn't like needles. Obviously, she was like gross. Um. Oh, and then he tells her. Oh, and then at the end of six nineteen, he tells her like what the, the plan. plan to say to um Renee. Yeah. Basically, so then I think when Ren- Renee gets back again, she yes. comes back again. Yeah, she had, um, she had, um, I guess went to go grab, like, food or something or a drink, and then, um, Bella tells, Bella doesn't want him to leave, so he pretends that he's gonna, um, take a nap, and she's like, don't forget to breathe, because mm-hmm. she knows he, he doesn't have to. Yeah. And so then, then they talk. Yeah, so the Renee comes in. I don't really like Renee's parts. I just don't really like Renee, yeah. you know? But, uh, yeah, and, I mean, freaking... Edward calls her kind of a narcissist Mm -hmm. on 622. It's all like, it was uncomfortable to listen to Bella in her condition, soothe her healthy mother, but I suppose this had always been the relationship. Perhaps the way Renee's unique mind interacted with others had made her into something of a narcissist. It would be hard to be, it would be hard to avoid even, I mean, when everyone catered to your unspoken needs. So. Yeah. And then on the next page is when, Renee tells her that, you know, they're, that they're gonna, that, that about Florida and stuff, and she was like, I want to stay in Forks. Yeah. And she was like, no, like, I want to live there. And then, um, she said, I want to live in Forks, I'm already said about at school, and I have a couple of girlfriends. And then Renee looked at Edward like, hmm. Hmm. Sure. And she said, the boy is the real reason. I just don't like her thoughts, you know? Yeah. I just... I like how they portrayed Renee in the movies because we don't see much of her. So you don't know unless you've read the books um, how she really is. Because, I mean, especially that freaking how she didn't go to Bella's graduation yeah. just always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, and here she was like compared Bella to Charlie. She was like, yeah. oh, you're like Charlie. Like, it's too soon. Which is just like... She, she was like, good, so she's not getting all intense and Charlie-ish about this. Oh, Like, what does she, like, oh my god, the fact that she has so much against Charlie, I'm like, girlfriend, you were married to him, you loved him, you're the one that walked out on him. Also, so. I feel like maybe, like, she she was definitely the problem in that relationship, because, well, I mean, like, she said that Charlie wanted to take things, t- was taking things too fast or whatever, but, like, they had a baby, like. You have at to At that be, point, you have of, to, like, yeah. ro- you know. But Renee was just, Renee is a narcissist, you know? Yeah, and then it's all like, Renee kind of, she never said it, but it was kind of always, it it was, she at least, her actions made Bella always feel that she was preventing Renee from doing what she wanted. And I'm just like, you know, Renee, if you weren't ready for a baby, obviously Charlie would have done anything for his daughter. Mm-hmm. Maybe Bella should have been raised by Charlie, but then it's all like, yep. Yeah, but then it's all like, and I, I firmly believe that. But then I also b- remember how he was a cop, and it, his job, he wouldn't be able to have the time to like properly raise her. Yeah, and I'm all like, she just got the, and I'm like, so Bella got the freaking short end of the stick both ways. She really did. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe if if Charlie had ended up raising Bella, like she would have, um. He would have wanted to find, like, a wife or a girlfriend sooner because he knows that Bella would have needed someone to, like, 
take care of her and, like, be a motherly figure, so. Yeah. Uh, and also, Renee's thoughts where, you know, it did not take much convincing from Bella for her to, like, leave. Go home, yeah. Because, yeah, because, I mean, I know damn well if it was my mom, my mom would not, like, budge. Like, if I told my mom, you can go, but if I'm in the hospital a broken and bruised, my mom would be like, um, laundry can wait. Spoil, spoil food can wait. But no, Renee just needed one reassurance from Bella, and boom, she was going to go. Yeah, and then here, on the next page, is when Edward was like, you should go to Florida. And she was like, well, why would I go to Florida? Like, you'd be stuck inside all day. And he was like, I can just stay in Forks. And then she was like, she was like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, I think because her, um... Her heart rate started going because she was like, um, she was so distraught, yeah, by, yeah, by his response. Like, you want me to leave you? Yeah, and he was like, "Please calm down." And she was like, "Don't leave me." And he said, "I won't." Mm, Edward, <laughs> and he said, "Oh, this pissed me off. It pissed me off." He said, "Not until you're whole again." Not until you're ready. Not until I find the strength. I just can't. I just not. I just can't. And he told her, Bella, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right here as long as you need me. He was like, do you swear you won't leave me? And he, um, he said, I swear. I think they were, yeah, he had his, like, hands in her face. Um, and then... Oh, her, oh, her heart was going fast, and so he was, like, better, right? She was, like, she, he just had to reassure her that, you know, that he wasn't leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, let's see. I didn't understand. Oh. She, because she told him, he said, overreacting just a little bit, don't you think? And she was like, why did you say that? Are you tired of having to save me all the time? Do you want me to go away? And he was like, no, I don't, I, I don't want to be without you, Bella. Of course not, be rational. And I have no problem with saving you either if it weren't for the fact that I was the one putting you in danger and I'm the reason that you're here. And she did, she said, yes, you are the reason I'm here, the reason I'm here alive. Um, And he said, barely covered in gauze and the plaster and hardly able to move. So they're basically arguing here. <laughs> um, and she was like, he was like, I could have killed you. She was like, you, but you didn't. And then she, she said, promise me. And he was like, what? And she said, you know what? And this is when she like made him promise that he's like, not going to leave. He said, I don't seem to be strong enough to stay away from you. So I suppose that you'll get your way, whether it kills you or not. She said, good. And this is when she asked, why didn't he just let the venom spread? And he was like, oh my goodness. Like, now like now she's asking, you know? <laughs> yeah. I can't. This whole thing just makes me so upset. I know. Ugh. It's just a lot of, like, dialogue where, you know, we've kind of seen all this dialogue in twilight we just see like you know his uh, it's at like different times kind of yeah so it's like we just see his confliction with it we see um their bickering and how he's very anxious at the thought of it and well then again you know <laughs> bells are very i mean not bella well bella too but edward is full like stephanie meyer has said it multiple times like edward is very anxious like she i think she even said that like although bella i think physically resembles her the most when she was like first writing and you know thought mm -hmm. she definitely put more of her emotions with writing edward because she yeah. herself has said that she deals with like very bad anxiety yeah and then basically she was like oh like uh like, you, why can't I be like you, right? And he gets a flashback of when Rosalie told him, what will you do when she begs? 
and then they they're arguing about turning her right and she was like um she said he said of course you are um you may have a scar or two and she said you're wrong i'm going to die but like she meant like he was like really bad like you're gonna be out here in a couple days you know whatever and she was like she says i may not die now but i'm going to get i'm gonna die sometime every minute of the day i get closer and i'm going to get old and this is when he was like fuck <laughs> this is it she got me. yeah he and was he, like this he is tries- it and it's like he tries to brush it off like that's how it's supposed to happen it should be like that you know you're supposed like he shouldn't like his kind shouldn't even exist you're supposed to be born you live you die oh and this is also where she tells him like um she said if you if you think that's the end then you don't know me very well you're not the only vampire i know and she said alice he said alice wouldn't dare and she was like alice already saw it didn't she you know like that's why the thing she says upsets you. She knows I'm going to be like you someday. And so he's like, damn, she's not as dumb as I like. I don't think he's ever thought she was dumb, but he thought that she was maybe a little oblivious to some things. And he was like, dang. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> um, so then she asked, so where does that leave us? And he said, I believe it's called an impasse. But he knew that he was going to leave her at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and he basically put her to sleep. He was like... <laughs> he calls the nurse. He calls the fucking nurse and asks, I think Bella needs some more sedation. She feel she needs to get some sleep. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> that's how, you know, Some most people, when they want to end a conversation, they say, we'll talk about this another time. No, Edward Cullen will sedate you. He's going to sedate you. Um, and then he's on page 633, he tells her again. He says again, until you're healthy, until you're ready, until, we find I, until I find the strength I need. Um, and then she said... But it just sucks. He was like, I told you I'm not going anywhere. Don't be afraid. As long as it makes you happy, I'll be here. And then he says, until I find the strength I need. And then he, she was like, you're talking about forever, you know. And then he was like, well, immortal kind of forever. And then um, and then he teased her over her saying that it was just a crush and all that. But then, yeah, so then she, oh, the nurse gave her medicine and she said, stay. She was all like drugged up and stuff. And then he tells her the same thing, as long as it makes you happy, as long as it's best for you. And she was like, it's not the same thing, but she's already, like, going to sleep. Um, and then he was like, you can't argue, you can argue, argue with me when you wake up. And she was just like, slowly, she's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> they say I love you, and oh my god, it always makes me, you know, when she says, her last thing is, I'm Ben on Alice. But then this when he says, I buried my face in the hollow of her neck and breathed in her, her searing essence, wishing again, as I had in the beginning, that I could dream with her. And I was like, Edward. I know. So they kissed, and she said, thanks. He said, anytime. <laughs> I just, oh, I'm betting on Alice. That needs to be like a, like a quote, like something that you put on a shirt or something. I'm betting on Alice. That honestly is probably, you know, maybe that was her motivation and like her motto the entire duration of the Twilight Saga was, I'm betting on Alice. Hey, and she did bet on Alice. Like, Alice is the one that came back, took her to Italy. Like, she was betting on Alice. Alice was her maid of honor. That's true. So, epilogue and occasion. This is the last, last little chapter we get. Oh. I'll... So, at this, they ended up, you know, you know, Bella ends up able to go home. Um, I believe that Carl, Char- Carlisle and Edward brought Bella back um, to Forks. Um, Charlie and Bella were talking a lot before they le- before they left. Um, Charlie was not happy with Edward, of course, because. He was the reason why Bella left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Bella was in a wheelchair, but then they ended up getting her to um, to get to a booth so that she could like walk on crutches and stuff like that. Um, yeah. 
Oh, and oh, because he, Charlie didn't. They didn't want Charlie wanted to meet them there at in Seattle, and they're like, no, like it's fine. Like we'll um, like we'll take her. And he, he was like, no, because he wants to see his daughter. Um, but um, what it? It says it should have been a long drive behind Charlie's police car. Um, Going exactly the speed limit. <laughs> yeah. And then Alice took care of Bella a lot. I love that. Yes, yes. I just want to know, like, they, you know they had, like, girl talk. They were, like, girly times. Like, it's time to talk. Uh, probably making fun of Edward. Probably. Um... Yeah, so I th- Alice helped her a lot. Like she would help her. Um, she became uh, he uh, uh, Edward called her called her like an in in nurse or like something like that. So Alice took yeah. over as a nurse and lady in waiting. Um, I love that because she would help her. I guess Bella would need help with certain intimate needs. He says. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah. probably like cha- wiping and changing and things like that. So they grew really close. <laughs> yeah. Um, they went back to school. Um, they they and they were kind of cute, you know. She was like, "If I could carry you at school, I would." But, um, and he was. She was like, "People will probably still stare." Then, um. And then, I don't know what I have. She was like, probably not. However, will you have never appreciated the fact that I'm actually frightening? I promise you I can do something about any staring. And she was like, how? Because, and he was like, I'll show you. And she's like, now I'm curious. So back to school ASAP. He's like, whatever you want. So, um, I think they ended up, a, uh, she gets her crutches and, and her boot. It's not a boot, right? It's a walking cast. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I call it a boot whenever, like, I think of it. Yeah, and then he talks about Jessa, Jessica um, gossiping. Um, of course she is. Of course. And then Bella would actually start sitting with them, right? This is when she was sitting, started sitting with the Cullens. Yeah, which... Um, you know, Rosalie did not enjoy. No. Um, but Edward wanted her to like be with her friends and stuff like that. And he was like, Bell healed and time passed. I clung, clung to each a second. It says, um, Alice's, Alice's motivations were probably at least 70 percent selfish she loved to make over because they that's when they had said that they were going to start they were going to take Bella to prom um but so Alice wanted to do her makeover and then um Edward just wanted a memory to have um he said he had a vision not like Alice not a true prophecy but it was a probable scenario it was a vision created an intense kind of ache through my entire body it was half agony half pleasure i envisioned bella 20 years from now maturing gracefully into middle age like her mother she would hold on to the image of youth longer than most but when the lines came they would not mar her beauty i imagined her somewhere sunny in a pretty but simple house that was unless she changed her way significantly filled with clutter adding to the clutter would be children two or three maybe one boy with charlie's curly hair and smile and a girl who like bella took after her mother I did not try. I did not try to picture their father or think about how his face might be reflected in her children. That was all agony. Mm. That's I so sad. Literally, when I read this, it was just, <gasps> and then it was all like when or Bella could laugh when her child asked, and be and she'd be like, "It was crazy." Yeah. I didn't go to yeah. So that's. Um, so it was so that Bella could have something that she could tell her family later, right? Yes. And I love that she, 
she's like, but my lunatic best friend kidnapped me for makeover and my boyfriend took me to, took me over my protest. It wasn't so bad in the end. Mm. Just like thinking about like, it, yeah, I have something to talk about when she, like to her kids about high school and her first boyfriend, her first love. Ew. Ew. Uh, I can't. I hate, I hate it here. It's just. <laughs> so basically, um, they start, they get Bella ready for prom. She's in her, you know, iconic dress and um, shoes and all that stuff. But, um, it was so funny because when they got into the car, Charlie, because Charlie had kind of organized it, right, with Alice. Um, and so, <laughs> Edward answered. Um, oh, no, Bella called Charlie. Or, uh, Charlie called Bella, and Bella was like, yes. And then he was like, Oh, no, no, no. Edward, Charlie called Edward. No. And when Edward was like, Charlie, hello, Charlie. And then Bella was like, Charlie, what? <laughs> Why is he calling you? And um, and he said <laughs> that Tyler was at the house because he thinks that he was taking Bella to prom. And he was like, you're kidding. He laughed. <laughs> and then basically he blew his cover there because he was like, Oh, no, but then Edward talked to Tyler, and he was like, Hello, Tyler, this is Edward Cullen. And then um, Bella was like, What is happening? He's like, I'm sorry if there's been some kind of miscommunication, but Bella is unavailable tonight. And he just said, Oh. And then he said, To be perfectly honest, she'll be unavailable every night as far as anyone besides myself is concerned. No offense, and I'm sorry about your evening. But this pisses me off because he knows he's going to leave, and he does that. Exactly. What a dickhead. <laughs> Who's... You know, Edward... <sighs> and then Bella... Pissed off. Pissed off. She was like, are you kidding me? Because she was, that's, when they, that's when she figured out that they're taking her to prom. He locked the doors, even though he can... Uh, she can unlock the door anyway. <laughs> and he was like, don't be difficult, Bella. And she was like, why are you doing this? She was like, she was like, Bella, what did you think we were doing? <laughs> and then she starts crying. My she girl. Starts, she starts crying because, <sighs> oh, I don't think she tells him, she tells him there. She tells him later, right? I think. Why she was crying. Almost done. Yeah, because, yeah, because she was hoping he would change her. Yeah, so they go to everyone's gonna go to the to the prom, all the Cullens and all that. Um, Charlie was in on it. That's when they tell her, and then he was like, "Apparently, Tyler wasn't though." <laughs> um. So then, he, oh, he tells her, "When someone wants to kill you, you're as brave as a lion." And then when someone mentions dancing, <laughs> um, they get to the prom. Let's see. Oh, and I thought this was so cool. So they already got there, and all the Cullens were dancing. They were showing off, like, just being these cool human beings who dance, right? Yeah. Um, and then Bella tells him, do you want me to bolt the door so you can massacre the unsuspecting town folk? <laughs> and then he was like, and where do you fit into that scheme? She's like, oh, I'm with the vampires, of course. He was like, anything to get out of dancing. She said, anything. I love that. So then he was like, I got all, I've got all night because she was going really slow. And she was like, Edward, I can't dance. Um, and he was like, don't be silly, I can. So then they start dancing, but he's like carrying her and dancing kind of. Um, like her feet are on his, her, on his feet. And she's like, I feel like I'm five years old. Yeah. And then Edward starts hearing Jacob. So Jacob Jeez. in his head was like, I'm not going to do it. I'll give the money back. This is embarrassing. Why does my dad have to be the insane one? Why couldn't it be Qu Quill? Um, so then she was like, she realized that Jacob was there and Jacob asked for a dance, right? And that's basically when, um, basically, uh, <laughs> he wants to chat with you. Um, oh, okay. So Edward was like, 
was imagining like what could like this be about right and he was like even if they paid for a billboard on the 101 that read the local doctor and his children are vampires you've been warned no one would believe even his son didn't believe <laughs> which i was no, like the thing, and the thing is is that that was like a meme all over tumblr of like a billboard with that saying and then it was like carlisle's picture next to it and then it was billy like below love that <laughs> oh my goodness um, so then he asks to dance with Bella and basically they just tell him, you know, like, my dad wants you to break up with your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, he tells you, you look really pretty, by the way. Oh, I love that. Oh, and then he tells him he thinks Edward had something to do with, oh, Bella says he thinks that Edward had something to do with me getting hurt. And then they were both like, they stopped dancing. They were just like, oh. And he was like, oh, I pissed her off now. She hates me. <laughs> um, and then, was it here where Edward had re- like thought of Bella's life with Jacob? If it was, or am I imagining things? I think he does around this time because. Oh, yes, it's right seen- here. It's on 62. Yeah. It says. Yeah. Um. It was strange how much older he seemed tonight. They look like peers now, maybe just because of his new height. As awkward as her injured leg made their dance adjacent movement, she seemed more comfortable with him than many, with many of her other human friends. Perhaps his very pure open mind had that effect on people. A strange thought crossed my mind, half imagination, half fear. Would that pretty cluttered little house be in the push? I shook the idea away. It was just irrational jealousy. Jealousy was such a human emotion. Powerful but senseless, based on nothing more than watching her pretend to dance with a friend. I would not let the future trouble me. I can't. Oh my goodness. Um, so then basically, Bella's just like, yeah, whatever, right? Like, this is, you know, you better get, get your money. And um, then Jacob, uh, Edward came back and, you know, came to dance with Bella. But then she was like, um... Oh, Bella was mad. He was like, don't worry about Billy. Like, it's fine. Whatever. They end up... Oh, Edward on 654 tells her, he caught you pretty. (laughs) Jealousy. And he was like, that's practically an insult, the way you look right now. You're much more than beautiful. I can't. Can't with Edward. And then Bella's like, you might just be a little biased. Yeah. Um, so they end up leaving, right? They, like, they're going and sitting on, like, a bench somewhere outside of the venue. Yeah, and that's where, oh, in this one we get Twilight again. Um, because he says that at the top of 655 as he guides her outside. And then, um, that's when he confronts her of why she was so surprised when he said he was taking her there. Yeah, so she tells him, um, yeah, so she was like, but you, he told her, you have some other theory. I'm curious, what did you think I was dressing you up for? And she was like, I don't want to tell you. And he was like, you promised. You found, I know. And he's like, um, she's like, I think it will make you mad or sad. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I still want to know. So then she says, I assumed it was some kind of occasion, but I didn't think it would be some trite human thing, prom. And he said, human. And she was like, okay. So I was hoping that you might have changed your mind that you were going to change me after all. And um, he thought you, he was like, you thought that would be a black tie occasion, did you? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't know how these things work. And he was just like, it's not funny. Um, and then, oh, and then he was like, are you really that willing? She was like, she said, yes. She was like, so ready for this to be the end. For this to be the twilight of your life. Though your life has barely started, you're ready to give up everything. She was like, it's not the end, it's the beginning. And he said, I'm not worth it. And then he was like... It makes me so mad, though, because right before that, he's mentioning how he plans to leave when she's healed. And mm-hmm. I'm like, how dare you? I know. And then um, he was like... Sh- she said, do you remember when you told me that I didn't see myself very clearly? You obviously have the same blindness. He was like, I know what I am. 
And she rolled her eyes because she was so annoyed. And he was like, you're ready now then. And she said, um, yes. Oh, no, I can't. Um, so then he said, right now. And she said, yes. He was like, I can't, you can't really believe that I would give up. Oh, because he was like, um, he like leaned in or something like that, right? And then she was like, you can't really believe I would give in that easily. And she was like, a girl can dream. Is that what you dream about being a monster? Not exactly. Um, mostly I dream about being with you forever. I can't. And he said, Bella, I'll, I will stay with you, liar. Fucking a liar, dude. You're a liar. Oh my God. You know, have you ever seen that meme of Kourtney Kardashian? No, not Kourtney. Khloe Kardashian, after she finds out that Tristan has cheated on her with um, Jordan Woods, she slams on the table. She's like, liar! <laughs> yeah I put that in the um, sneak peek yeah for real um and then he says as long as I can as long as it's allowed as long as it doesn't hurt you until the sign comes until it's impossible for me to ignore and then he just told her isn't that enough and she said enough for now and then um she said look I love you more than everything else in the world combined isn't that enough and he said yes it is enough and then he said, enough forever. And then he said, like, this time I spoke of the real forever, my eternal forever. As the night finally overcame the end of the day, I leaned forward and kissed the warm skin of her throat. And that is the end. And the midnight sun. I, I mean, I was crying as soon as I finished that. And then I was crying even more when, you know, read the acknowledgments and on... And it's like, at, so she gives like, you know, all of her acknowledgements to like the people who she is grateful for helping her with this book. And then at the end says, and finally the readers who were so patiently eager for this book, I would never have finished it without your support. You belong on this page. Please write your name on the line below and give yourself a high five. And I was like, why you got to do this to me? First, you got to me with that freaking dedication note. And now you got to do it at the end too. Yeah. Dang. Oh. And we're... It's done! It's done! Oh Bye. my goodness. We finished Midnight Sun. I might have to do another rereading of it soon, because... I know, same. I'm like, I want to reread it again. Ugh. It just... How many... So, because I... Because... He had like what was it three or four um, references to Persephone and the pomegranate seeds? Because I remember you had pointed them out. Each yeah, time. like four or five or something like that. Yeah. He mentions it a lot, which I I like. I think that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then um, love there. There's so much to the other side of you know Twilight that. Is what I love about this book, and I think that's why when I fat first found out about Midnight Sun, I had wanted it so much. Was because mm -hmm. like you know I lo I love Bella and I love the original story, but there's like a lot of content for the Collins that I had desired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, we've made it to the end. Six out of six. <sighs> so it feels like unbelievable that it's done. Yeah, we started this series back in like beginning of January. Yeah. And we started the new year with our first episode of the series. So now we're coming to Valentine's Day and it's been over a month. Yeah. So that's wow. I can't believe it. I know. Oh wow. This is just... I'm looking at Edward on my wall right now cuz I have that giant Edward tapestry and I'm just like and it's new moon Edward too and I'm like how dare you? Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> How uh, dare you. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know. I feel so overwhelmed by finishing it that I'm like, I don't even know what to say. I'm just hurt. I was hurt. Maybe at the end of this, I'll put, if you, I don't know if you have a reaction video of you finishing it, but I can put both of our <laughs> reactions. I, I have a, I, yeah, I have like a small reaction of me like um, finishing it where I'm just like, Okay, well, maybe I'll put that in at the end of the YouTube, but... we. Oh, my God, we can um put... Because don't you have a reaction when you got yours, when you unboxed it? Yeah. 
I have one too, so maybe uh maybe on our TikTok we'll do like a like a before reading Midnight Sun and then an after and we'll yeah. we'll put both of our videos. Just send it yes. and I'll make it. Okay, well yes. that's it guys. Oh my goodness, we are at the end. Yes. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening and we hope that you enjoyed this series as much as we did and if you have any thoughts or opinions, um, let us know in the comments or go to our Instagram and comment on our post there. We yeah. probably will we'll try to go live this coming week. We are busy people, as we mentioned. Um, I'm a full-time student. Raymond's a full-time teacher. So our lives probably aren't going to be, you know, as continuous as they were last year. So Yeah, and I, I think if anything, um, if we don't go live, we can always pick it back up and um, during spring break or pick it back up in the summer because this summer will be all about preparation. Well, because I'm, well, those of you that don't know, in September we're going to Forks for the, for the Forever Twilight Festival. Um, I'm going to buy my tickets in March. So in March I'm buying my flight and I'm buying my uh, VIT ticket. So I'm going to okay. start making like little vlogs about that. Um, I just got my VIT the other day. I, oh my God, I was on the phone with my mom. And as soon as I hit complete order, I literally screamed. I was like, ah! God, <laughs> no, I'm like. My, mom, my mom's on freaking speaker phone. And my dad, I can hear him in the back. And he's like, what the fuck was that? And I'm <laughs> like, and she, my mom's like, she's excited. She's excited. It's happening. But yeah, so we'll we'll give little updates here and there about that. And we'll be able to do our, we're going to, in September, we're going to do our first in-person together podcast. So. Oh my God. That's going to be wild. Yes. We're going to have to find time because, I mean, we're probably not going to sleep much. So we'll just be, we'll just do like an impromptu. Impromptu podcast where we literally just talk about what's expected of, um, the festival, yes. yeah. Yeah, you'll see, you'll probably get a handful of special guests because all of our Twi Talk friends are going to be there. So, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting trying to take this speaker on the plane with me. <laughs> oh my god. Um, pack in your carry-on. Yeah, honestly. Alright guys, well that is it. We'll see you guys. This is uh, this episode is, gonna, is out on um, the... 15th and we'll have another episode out on the 22nd we're not 100 percent sure what that episode is going to be about it'll probably be a more like fun light-hearted video just because we've been so like um covering midnight sun that it's been very like structured and like a set thing for us that we'll probably just do something more like talking just casual conversation casual bring up conversation. a topic or something and yeah, yeah. That, that sounds fun yeah, so be sure to follow us on all of our social media. Check out our flow page so you can help. Um, look, you can like look at the links that we have there. We have a link to um to the Quillet Tribes Move to the Higher Ground project. We should totally check out and donate if you can. There's yes. also links to um the Black Lives Matter organization on ways to help and donate um and spread the word. Um, if you're over 18 in the U.S register to vote it's not an election year but midterms will be coming next year so yeah. get on that um and yeah so also check out our other podcast which is a true crime mystery supernatural podcast called the very eerie extremely wicked and quite spooky podcast we have two episodes out our third one will be recording this coming week for next monday so yes and that episode that podcast is about Children of God, or is it I the think yeah, Children of God. Yeah, I it's, think it's Children of God and then Branch Davidians. Yeah, so if you're into true crime and all that stuff, check out that one, and we will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Hey. bye.